Yes, sir, baby, on the Radar Radio. Yo, special guest in the building. I'm so excited today. Cody Shane is here with me. Yeah, Welcome to the crazy. show. What's up, bro? We just performed a new single out now. Yes. Congratulations. I appreciate that. I like the consistency I've been seeing from you recently. Thank you. I appreciate that a lot. I feel like, you know, um, like there was a little bit of time where, you know, you, you had taken a little bit of a break. You had taken some time off. And then seeing you drop all these singles and obviously doing a bunch of features has been really cool to have you kind of like back in... Yeah, I'm super excited about it. I had to take a little uh a little mental health break mm. and just, you know, realize what was really important to me and, you know, get closer to my family and really like kind of be by myself and kind of like isolate mm. myself a little bit and be able to focus on that what's important. And now I'm back. I'm excited. I ain't going to stop dropping this shit. <laughs> As you should. With the mental health break, when did you, I guess, when, when did the mental health break first begin for you? When did you first decide that you were going to take some time to yourself? Well, you know, quarantine came at a crazy time. We was on tour when quarantine came and that kind of just, I know for a lot of people, you know, quarantine held a lot of people up and it definitely just, it took us off the road. Like it was just a lot going on. And then, you know, not too long after my brother, Maddie passed away, the person that's made the song that that's produced pretty much everything that I've done. He produced pressure, FaceTime, mm. let's not fall in love. That's like my brother, that's my heart. And he passed away and I think I kind of just, I was already going through like a crazy breakup and then that happening kind of just fucked my mind up and mm. I just had to like get away real quick. I feel like Atlanta uh, Atlanta has a way of um, burning you out or like chewing you up. So I had to like get away before. Distance yourself a little yeah, bit Yeah, before, before I felt that happen to me. So all this happened during like the quarantine yes. period. Yes. That's crazy. Yeah, it was crazy. It was a lot. My grandfather died. My cousin overdosed. Like, it was just so much going Too on. Too much happening at the same time. Too much happening at the same time. And with the tour you were on, that was your tour? No, that was the Trippy Red tour. That, oh, that was the Trippy Red tour. Okay. Yeah, the Love Me More tour. Got you. So that, so then obviously that got canceled because of, of COVID and whatnot. Yeah. And then you mentioned you was going through a breakup and then all this stuff happened. Mm -hmm. Was it all like in like a certain couple month period or did this kind of like happen in like a month? Really, that was like 2020 vibes. Like okay. Early, like all 2020. Um, my brother died like early 2021. Okay. Um, February. So by April, I was gone to right. Chicago. I had to get out of there. So you went to Chicago to. Yeah, kinda... my family's from Chicago. I was raised in Chicago. So mm -hmm. I had to get closer to my mom, my sisters, my nieces, and just, you know. Recenter yourself. Decompress a little bit. Recenter yourself. Yeah. Was there ever like a time in that period where you were kind of like unsure of going back to music too? Um, yeah, for sure. I definitely had moments where I felt like, I don't know, do I just want to go to another country and cut my hair off and like start a whole new life? Whoa, and, cut like, your hair off. Play the guitar <laughs> oh. and like just go somewhere where nobody knows me. But then it's like, in, in, in all actuality, like, this is all I know. I wouldn't really feel right. Right. I seen something that said I wouldn't forgive myself if I gave up, and that's how I feel. Like I wouldn't feel right mm. doing anything else. So. Right. Because I think, snapped out of that kind of quick. Yeah. Because I think like the idea of like going somewhere where nobody knows you is like, in the moment when you're feeling all the feels is like. Because I feel like I've had like that same type of moment. Where I'm like, damn, I want to go somewhere where nobody knows me and like start over. Yeah. But then like when you really start to think about it, and then you kind of get into like like you said like, this is everything I know. This mm -hmm. is everything I've done. And it's like, why would I stop now? Why I can't give up now just because of this setback? Then it kind of like jogs you back to like yeah, reality. Yeah, just to disappear is a little selfish, you know. Yeah. It's a little selfish, you know, when you got family and you got people that count on you and people that care about you. Mm -hmm. It's a little bit selfish. So you went home uh, 2021 mm -hmm. after all that happened. And then, you know, you got back in touch with, like, you know, hanging out with your family, being with your family. Yeah, just getting more, you know, close to what matters. Okay. Love. Love. <laughs> so what really helped you? So the family is what really helped you get through that tough period of time. Yeah, like that was my biggest thing. My mom, my sisters, just, you know, really being there for me um, made it everything. Okay. What How? What were you doing during that, during that time to have yourself centered? Were you writing? Were you, you know, did you have any um, hobbies you picked up? Like what really helped you personally aside from, you know, your folks and... I think like learning how to be a good daughter, and okay, a good sister, and a good auntie, mm -hmm. like helped me center myself, you know, and not just being like 
the favorite auntie because I buy you everything. <laughs> actually being a good sister and keeping my word and right. being there for my people. I think that helped me and definitely writing. And I honestly took some time where I didn't do no music. Like I didn't even listen. I didn't listen to no beats. I didn't write. I didn't. I just wanted to like mm-hmm. completely plug out. Plug out. Yeah. Unplug. 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 Unplug, unplug. Yeah. plug out though. Plug out. I wanted unplug. to completely <laughs> plug out, and I got the chance to do that, and I'm honestly grateful. I'm so much better. Did during when you were like, I'm sure at some point like you would go back on like your social medias and like you would see your fans like asking you like where you were and all that too yeah i'm gonna be honest i'm I'm gonna try to keep it as candid as possible bro i went through a lot just like kind of like a spiraling phase Mm -hmm. um i was i i i wanna i was into a lot of different shit you know Mm -hmm. what i mean i was getting a little high i was just moving real real fast so when i came to chicago i literally didn't have my phone i didn't want anything so, no fan interaction so either. yeah when i first got back on instagram that's when i got back on my instagram that's when you got back you know on what instagram. i mean but okay. for those like two months i think it was just like nothing i didn't want to be bothered bothered with anything i wanted to completely be in my own world wow but now we're in a good place now we're in the best place possible. okay now we're I in a good place blessed i'm healthy i'm happy i feel like love i smell better the bra- <laughs> <laughs> i smell i smell better it's crazy no so no no spiraling no nothing we good we, no we're we good, good. We happy. it's gangster i'm excited i'm All in new good. york it's on the radar we you know i'm ha- i'm happy that that you're in a good place because like even when um when we first got to connected shout out my guy charlie in the building Chow bella do you go by anything else now i never Chow know bella just shout Bella right now. He kind of tired because he drove all the way out here in traffic. But um, but when we, we we first got connected, I was like, of course, like I would love to have um, Cody on the show because one, obviously being a fan of, of the music that you put out, I had also been one of those people that was like, yo, I haven't heard from her in a while. Like I want to like I want to reconnect as like a fan, but also like of course I wanted to meet you and talk to you and kind of yeah, like that's real, you know kind of help you know get the story out of where you've been and whatnot to the people. And you know what I'm saying? It's crazy because I honestly, like, this is like the second interview I've done. Right, I saw like, you did another one recently yeah, too. Yeah, this is yeah. like the second in-person interview I've done since. So it's it's cool to be able to kind of, con- I want to control the narrative and this is my first time being able to even say that little bit that I did. You know what I mean? Right, so right, I'm right, excited right. about that. I feel like it's the perfect place. Do you feel good that you're able to now kind of get it off your chest yeah. too? Because it kind of like, it's kinda, I feel like it's kind of like when you're in therapy and like, you know, it's hard to say the thing that you want to say, but once you say it, maybe. It's perfect. Yeah. yeah. So, Is that how you feel? You know, yeah, being able to say it publicly? Yeah, definitely being able to just be real. And you know, like mm-hmm. I was going through a lot and now I'm so much better for it. Like I'm so thankful for every piece of it. So, you know, one day when we off the camera, we'll we we'll talk a little more. About yeah, we can talk a little bit more about it. No, a thousand percent. Um, so when you went back and you started making the music, right? Um, what what type of space were you in when you finally got back and you were like picking up the pen and you were getting in the booth and whatnot? Like, what were you kind of? What, what what was the energy at that point? Like my like uh, like just I felt like <laughs> I had went through so much, but I was kind of. Um, I wasn't, I was just pushing it to the back of my mind, so I wasn't really dealing with it. So once I went to Chicago and I got to really deal with and face all the things that, you know, that was happening, once it came to my music, it was like, all right, I got so much to say because I feel like I haven't said anything in a year almost. You know, I got so much to, I feel like, get off my chest, and that's what this new music is. I'm really, really excited about it. Like, mm. I, I feel like it's so much that I didn't get a chance to talk about, and now I can talk about it. and. You know, now that I really know how I feel and I'm not just hurt, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? I can make a real, real statement. A real statement with the mm-hmm. music. And I love how you've kind of also been getting back with like other artists and getting into the collab stuff. You know, we had, uh, we got the record with Jacquees, we got the Rick Ross one, we got the Cowboy one. Um, and what I loved about each one of those that you were working on was that like the little vlogs that you was doing with them. Like you went to like the, what does Rick Ross call his mansion? What does he call it? Um, um, I don't know. I know he, he's biggest got house new, ever. Something. Shout biggest out to Rick Ross and Bel Air, man. Yeah, shout out to Rick Ross. He got like the ranch. He got like, what he just, he just got I think the a, drunkest I've ever been is in that crib. Really? Crazy. <laughs> he got like a bison on the property now yeah, too, right? Yeah, so, man. He got Louis Vuitton room. MCM rooms, Gucci rooms, like they filmed coming to America too. Got there too. too. Much space. <laughs> it's crazy. What yeah. was the idea? I guess to do like the vlogs to promote the records. Like, was that just like something that happened naturally? Or was that just like uh, um, you was just at with Ross one day and you're like, I'm gonna we're gonna let's do a vlog to promote our record. I'm not gonna lie, Bel Air was shooting something with um, Rick Ross and shout out to Bel Air. I got a great relationship, but then they hit me like pull up. We're in Atlanta. Sarah from Bel Air. Shout out to Sarah. Mm-hmm. We're in Atlanta. Pull up to Rick Ross crib. 
we need you here. And I just pulled up. And I had already had the record with Rick Ross, but it wasn't like, hey, Rick, I'm coming to your crib. Yeah, like, be yeah, ready. Yeah, it wasn't yeah. like that. It was like I just pulled up, and when he seen me, it was love like that. Mm. And it just kind of happened organically, but and then we planned it. You know what I mean? Okay. So, yeah, that was hard. And I just kind of wanted to not just give records with nothing to kind of look at because it's been so long. So I wanted to kind of bring people back into my life. Bring people back and like show yeah. people that, you know, you're having fun with this shit mm -hmm. again. And even with the with the Jacques one, I love that because like you guys did the one chip <laughs> challenge. And yeah. I like, when I saw the video on YouTube, I was like, oh, hell no. I know that I'm, by the end of this shit, they both going to be like crying, watery eye. It, like He almost melted that day. <laughs> he was almost like, I'm never doing a record with you again. <laughs> yeah, it was about to be over. I'm like, I'm sorry, bro. Like, I didn't even know what I was getting myself into, let alone you. Right. But yeah, it was crazy. Honestly, the only reason I did it, because I got him next to me. I ain't no, oh, I ain't no bitch. I'm like, all right, bro, let's do it. And it was like, I'll never do it again. Never again. Shout out to One Chip, though. Shout out to One Chip. <laughs> yeah, you said you was like feeling it like all the way in your throat, my too. Nasals, my nasals, that, that shit was damn near coming out my ears, bro. Like, that shit is real life hot, like. Anybody that said it's not hot is capping. Lie for the gram for the big TikTok, lies. It's cap. Big lies, but it, it's cool. Like I said, like it's cool to see you back out. And I know you had like the way you talk about um, Jacquees. Like you know, I, clearly y'all go way, 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 way back. That's my bro. Like we don't go way, way, way back. But the I've way you talk him. about it, it sounds yeah, like y'all yeah, go way, like, way, way, way back. I've known him since I was like younger. But when I got older and my music oh, kind of matured a little, that's kind of when we linked up and just a cool guy he's just a genuine guy i don't have a lot of rap friends so <laughs> you know like when i meet genuine people i fuck with them you know yeah tusi says tusi has a very similar sentiment about him like when he came he was like yeah. he's like people need to give um jacques his flowers yeah like i'm gonna be honest there's no other young like really i'm not talking about like the the lucky day like you know the, all of yeah, them yeah, but yeah, i'm yeah. but like they're like a different type yeah, of yeah like yeah, young like nigga shit like yeah like jacques is like the one it's nobody else if you're not going to get the flowers to him, who you going to give them to? Mm. You know what I mean? So. You heard Land him. of the free. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to John Cleese. That's my bro. I got to So it's it's interesting because you came up in like the SoundCloud time, right? Mm -hmm. When SoundCloud was really popping. And now, um, I mean, SoundCloud's still around, but like. It's still a thing. It's, it's, still, it's, it's trying to make its way back. It's still, it's still a thing. I know that they have like their bumps in the road, but what do you make of like that? Because it's like, I feel like. I don't know. I feel like we 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 went into the SoundCloud era. We had that era happen, right? And obviously, you know, all all the artists who who made it through that era, like yourself, like y'all still putting out music, y'all still doing y'all thing. Mm -hmm. But like, it feels like the idea of like SoundCloud being a place to like I don't know, maybe like become a big artist doesn't really exist in people's minds anymore. Something it's, that I peeped. It's definitely not the same. More YouTube now. It's, yeah, it's definitely not that same. And like more TikTok now. Like, yeah, that's TikTok like too. That's the thing. Like, SoundCloud is just, it's not that same. That used to be like the platform. Like, right. If you're lit on SoundCloud, you're lit everywhere. Right. And now that's more like a TikTok thing. Yeah. As or YouTube. Where, but I still yeah. drop on SoundCloud. I love SoundCloud because that's like. That's where you started. Everybody yeah. don't have Apple Music. Everybody don't have. Mm -hmm all this stuff so everybody barely could pay their phone bills so it's like let's you know i like to put out that that free shit sometimes yeah i think i miss like the discourse of like the sound like when you would have when you put the record up on soundcloud and you could like look at everybody's comments like yeah, I, that's like, like i think the one thing i really miss because like youtube is like YouTube is like one way with the comment section, but that one like it was just cool because like at the point in the song like yeah, you could see where they commented yeah. at when while they was listening to it like yeah yeah I think like that oh was I hard. like this oh like did you catch like you could like it's like a um, like on Genius where they have like your song lyrics exactly. and like they could like explain what the thing is about you might have someone like they might catch a bar or a lyric from your song and they might be like mm -hmm. oh Cody's talking about this moment in her life about this da, 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 da. Yeah. you could be like oh now I understand the song a little bit better and I think that that's something that I I think I miss most about it because yeah. you don't really get that on YouTube YouTube comment sections are just kind of like Instagram comment sections and like TikTok comment sections. It's just a bunch of people talking about nothing sometimes. Literally. Time. Or it's just like a lot of hate, like negative stuff. Yeah, but, um, <laughs> exactly. I think SoundCloud was definitely one of the biggest moments. It was a really, really big moment in music. Like mm. that whole wave was huge. Yeah, I miss it. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not going to lie. 2016 vibes. Yeah, Who doesn't oh, miss 2016? God. Why do we... 2016! I, I don't understand why we talk about 20... Like, I, under, I it understand. It was a beautiful year. It was a beautiful year. See, my thing is, like, <laughs> summer 2016... It was like, a beautiful year. It was so great. And I remember summer 2016 so well. And I... This, I was... 
I was in a really toxic relationship summer 2016, but for some reason I always be like, yo, I miss summer 2016. <laughs> I don't know why. Like yeah. I don't. I say that all the time, and I'm like, but wait a second, do I? Yeah. But I do. I think for me, I was I was young, so it was le it was way less pressure. We was just having fun, right. and they was capturing it and making a moment out of it. It right. wasn't like I was 19. You gotta 20. be on TikTok to do this. You gotta do that. It was just fun. We was just having fun. Like it was organic. Yeah, it was no pressure, and now it's so much. pressure pressure with everything because we so. adults now right i'm i'm 20 i turned 26 this year so. i'm 23 i turned 24 this year see i mean we're not that far we're not that yeah. far apart yeah i was like what 20 21 forever 21 for <laughs> 21 forever if you ask me if you i mean people think i look 30 but it i'm, I'm if you ask me i'm like 23 forever because the pandemic took two years away from my life exactly <laughs> so real life i'm giving 21 real <laughs> i'm giving 21 if we talking about the pandemic taking two years of our life, you know? I think I made what, what was the joke I made when I first started shooting in here? Uh, I said like, oh, um, if I said I was gonna get married at thirty, I'm pushing that shit back like four years. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm like, I need, I need my time back plus another two years, yeah, just plus just interest, just to make myself feel better again. <laughs> That's gangster though. And so it's been four years since the project, right? Yeah. Four years since the project, and we have a new project coming out. Um, this the, month, April. 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 Yes. April. It might get pushed back. We don't know. We're, yeah, we're we still, ain't we're even talk, going. We're talking April about for sure, though. April for sure, though. Uh, the single is out. We have the performance for the single that's yes, going to come out yes. as well. Um, shit, I might align this to drop the same week as the project just because I, I think that'll be cool for the rollout. I don't know. Y'all watching this now, so if, if I put it out the same week as the project, it is what it is. Um, then you'll know. But do we have a name for the project? <laughs> yes. Um, the name for the project is Love Roulette. This Love is the Roulette. project that me and Maddie did, what we were doing before he passed away. And mm -hmm. um, we had different, a, a few different plans for it. But once he passed away, I kind of just didn't want nobody to touch it. I wanted it to be um, exactly how we left it, acting mm -hmm. like all the records. And I just want that that feel, that feel that he left on it, you know? That's beautiful. So I'm excited about it. Um, it's, it's mature. It's love. It's heartbreak. It's everything. Is it just you on it? Yeah, it's me, and then those three features. Um, Are the ones that we've already gotten? Yeah. Okay. Uh, I got another feature. Might as well say it. I'm gonna put it out. Yeah, Lloyd. I got Lloyd on the album. I'm you really, got really Lloyd excited on the album. That. Yes, me and Lloyd got that shit. I'm so excited. I got Lloyd sounding like 2010. Oh my! I'm excited. How how do you get Lloyd on the album? How does this happen? It's, it's a blessing. Um, Maddie and Lloyd have been really close. They grew up okay. together, so. We was always supposed to work, and I just hit him, and he was like, yes, like, let's do it. Mm -hmm. We actually got, like, two of them, so I'm excited. I'm really, really excited about that. He's the GOAT. Do you also feel like, well, I mean, obviously this is like, you put this album out, it's like, all right, this is like the album where I'm back. You know what I'm saying? Like, new project out, it's been four years, it's like my return. This project, it's, I'm sorry. Go ahead, no, good. If you this, guys, go ahead, say what you guys This project for me is like. Um, I wouldn't even, I don't know if I would say I'm back. I guess, yeah, I'm back, but it's mm -hmm. like this project for me is like just the beginning. Like, this the beginning ain't of the even, return. Yeah, this ain't mm -hmm. even the, you know, this ain't even reached its peak yet. Like, I'd be more afraid for the music that's coming after. You know <laughs> why what are you I mean? Why are you, why are you go, I'm, I'm afraid. saying they should be. Oh, they should me. be afraid. They should yeah, be afraid. They I'm should happy. be afraid. <laughs> they should be afraid. But yeah. like, you know, do you feel any pressure with going into putting out a new project since it's been a couple of years? Like, is there any kind of. Like what well, I want I just want to know what kind of like you're thinking about like what's going on in your head leading up to the release of this. I definitely do feel pressure because it's been a while like you say and so which isn't a bad thing. Which isn't a bad thing. It's not a bad Sometimes thing. Sometimes you got to make them yeah. miss you. Of course. But I do just feel like ah, I hope they like it. I hope they like it, you know. And it don't matter if everybody like it. Just the people that support me and my fans, the people that love me. I right. just hope they like it. I hope it's everything that they been dreaming about for however long. You know what I'm saying? I don't want to miss no steps. I don't want to let nobody down. So, but then again, on the other hand, it's like this shit hard to me. I know they're going to like it. So, mm. it's a battle between me and my ego. But once it's out, it's, I'm sure that's all going to just like flow away. Yeah, yeah. Because at that point, it's like, it's already out into the world. If they like it, they like Whatever it. They core, think, as long as yeah. your core fans like it, I think that's all that matters. It is what it is. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I'm like, excited though. And with the, so this project being put out independently? Yes. Okay. Well, I'm working with a distribution company, Venus Music. I'm really so excited about that. Mm -hmm. Other than that, we on some independent shit. Do you ever think you'll do like some label shit? Mm -hmm. eh. Eh, I mean. <laughs> they gotta talk to you. They gotta talk to you nicely. Yeah, they gotta talk to me. Shit, they got. They might not. They don't even need to talk to me. Just show me the number. <laughs> I don't even want to talk once I go to the label. I want to be like Drake. Drake, no. 
just wire me my shit, and I come to the label. Whenever I have to. On a holiday, maybe. It's um <laughs> well, it's funny because one of the when I was doing research for this interview and coming up with questions and whatnot, one of the stories that I thought was like kind of the funniest thing, and I know you told it already, but I just had to bring it up because I thought it was so great. Was it's a story about how you got your braces off and then you got a grill <laughs> like the day right after? Gangsta. Like obviously you got you know you got your regular teeth off <laughs> yeah, right yeah. now, but like do you still have that grill? That's a real question. I, I got have. the bottom. I don't have the top. I lost the top. What happened to the top? I, the bo- <laughs> I don't even know, man. Life gets wild. I lost the top though, but I literally was so thirsty to get a grill, bro. Like. I must have left the doctor and went to get a get a mold. Like shout out to right Icebox. there. <laughs> shout out to Icebox, my first grill. Yeah, that was fire. That was a moment. How old were you when when that happened? I think I was like 17, Ain't 16, 17. No reason 17. you should be having that much money on a fur grill. <laughs> I'm having at top ten, years bottom old. ten, fourteen k gold, I'm going crazy. And you done lost one half of that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sad. Damn, Cody. I know you sound like my mom. <laughs> I just be thinking about the bread. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe it's maybe it's maybe it's my mom what she instilled in me about bread. But right. I'd be like, damn, man, I spent. I don't even want to know how much it costs, by the way. But like, damn, I, was I spent. Just young and having fun, you know. You still young and having fun. Twenty one forever. Young and having fun. I'm having the most fun. Twenty. Yo, talk to me about some of these tattoos you have. Like, I what? got so many. Bro. I know you do have so many. All right, so let's do this. <laughs> Which ones are your favorite or have like the most meaning to you? My favorite, yeah. um, this young heartthrob right here, YHT. Okay, of course. Um, the lightning bolt, which is my first ever tattoo. Um, I got it in in Canada. This one is born free. Okay. That's my I'm born free, like that. Um, man, I got a lot of favorite tattoos. I hate all my finger tattoos. Let's Why do you hate your about. finger tattoos? Because I was just young and doing shit. Just to do through. shit. If I was, if I was. In my right mind, on my 18th birthday, I probably wouldn't have got all of them like that. Oh, you got all of them on your 18th birthday? I literally birthday? got all all six of these in one day. See, that's my biggest Tripping. fear about getting tattoos. Like, I don't have any tattoos, yeah. right? But I'm I'm mad and decisive. Mm-hmm. And I know when I get one, obviously, it's per- I, you could get it removed if you want to. But, like, if for all intents, it's yeah. permanent. And I feel like I'll have it for, like, a month. And then I'll be like... I hate looking nah. at this shit on my body. Yeah, I hate looking at this shit. I just shit. look at it like some rock star shit. You could change your mind, but you can't change your decision. So, mm. you know. That's a bar. For life. That's a bar right there. And, like, so with this project, right, obviously this is also going to be like an ode to your brother. Um, Thanks, sir. Moving forward, um, have you worked on any new music for this next stuff? Like, what after this? Like, what type of new music are you working with? Who are you working with on this music? Like, what's kind of going on there? What type of sound are you looking for? I could drop once a month for the rest of the year for real. Project wise. Yeah, like I could okay. drop a little five. I could drop an EP once a month for the rest of the year if I mm. want to. But I got shit lined up. Like I'm excited. That's why I said y'all should be really looking for the shit that come after this because this is really like just the beginning. I'm, I'm in, I'm, I'm in a whole another mode. I'm on some whole other shit. Everything's musical. Everything's intentional. Everything is real. Mm-hmm. So I'm excited. We're not doing nothing trendy. We're not doing nothing for the TikTok. This ain't for TikTok. Damn, nothing for TikTok? This ain't for TikTok. Why? Unless it unless Unless it just happened. Unless it just happened. But this ain't we not in the studio like what'll be good for TikTok. How we right. gonna make some trend. We're not doing it. I like think that. it was like when Nikki said that. Nikki said like, oh, this this Gangsta. song is for TikTok and then somehow the song ended up going ended viral up on, on TikTok. TikTok. Yeah, it went on viral on TikTok. You know what I'm saying? But yeah. she wasn't making it with that in mind, you know? It just has to happen it organically, just, like we were yeah, talking about. Yeah, if it's not back organic, then. then we don't want it. Like twenty sixteen all over again. Twenty sixteen Tw- all over again. Twenty sixteen. Kobe bring back the 2016 vibes. Yeah, man. 2022. Yeah, I'm excited. We're going to go back on tour soon? Yeah, definitely. So when I drop this music, um, and should have started opening back up. I want to put together like a small like couple of dates, just just me for my fr- fans and, you know, take people that I love and that, I, that inspire me too. Mm-hmm. And just, you know, do some shit like that. Um, just something kind of intimate for the, so I can really touch the people because it's been so long and... Mm-hmm. I'm excited about that. Like, that's my favorite thing is being on stage. So I can't wait. Coming soon. Yes. Coming Especially because the last sooner one got canceled. <laughs> yeah. Sooner than soon. Sooner than soon. Um, also, I got to tell you, like, there was like a short period of time. I forgot exactly what year it was where I like couldn't escape your Sprite commercial. <laughs> like it was. Every- that was for everybody. Like, it, it that was, was like, not just you. It was like every YouTube video. It was yeah. like genre defining artists. And I like, <laughs> see, I still remember. Like, I just remember because it was on. It was literally every YouTube video would have like that Sprite commercial on or it would pop on the TV all the time. So when I saw you, I was like. I was like, yo, you ruined Sprite for me. <laughs> nah, fuck it with you. Shout out to Sprite. That was one of the best things I think I've ever done. Nah, that shit's hard. Those Sprite commercials, like, when they record those shits, they like, we gonna use these 
forever. <laughs> yeah, that's like the hardest Sprite commercial since Drake. Yeah. Yeah. I'll say For so. For real. Because even like they're the other hip hop ones. They're not going to say it, but you know. They're not, they not going to say it. Because like <laughs> even the other Sprite commercials, like the hip hop ones, they're pretty basic. They're pretty basic. I'm gonna tell you right now. The I look. auditioned for Sprite. Sprite had a mood board for their commercial before I even auditioned. I was on the mood board. The mood was me. The mood was before you. I even, you know, like it's the biggest shit since since Drake. So I like the was it like the LeBron and um yeah that was a good one, one? The, but that the, wasn't the hip, Christmas that, one. That was the Christmas. The Christmas one. That was hard. That one wasn't hip. Wasn't yeah, so much yeah, hip hop yeah. though because mm -hmm. drama's is like everything yeah. but that one's hard and i obviously i like obviously i love yours because i literally i like i know i know some of it bar for bar just because of how many <laughs> times you know you see a commercial so many times it's like yeah, uh, it's, it's like, like when the selena and barnes people come on or you know what i'm saying use mm -hmm. 180 it's like that shit. you, yeah, you just kind of uh, know it to that point because you've seen it so many damn times like the college the college commercials like. exactly <laughs> yeah. oh yeah, yeah, yeah. The education DC connection college. back in the day like teen nick i remember those <laughs> you know what i'm talking about college connection yeah yeah the, the, the girl Yo, that I girl. used to know the whole shit. Yeah. Yo, that girl could spit. I ain't gonna lie. Wherever she at right now, I hope she's living her best life. Me too. I hope she's lit. Being... I hope she's somewhere eating yellow tail. Yellow tail. Drinking wine. <laughs> Hopefully she got her college education. <laughs> right. She better have. I they better for pay free. for that shit too. And also since we in New York and we got uh we got we got Charlie, we got the family in the My building. Boy. Are you working? Are, do we do we have anything coming? Yeah, Don't look at me like that, yo. You try to look away from me. Don't do that, child. <laughs> Ch me and child about to do the tape, man. Me and child need a whole tape. Child got a twisted T in the building. He on bad timing today. <laughs> it's like, always I on here. bad timing. <laughs> no, no Remy today, but he on bad timing. So yeah. you got something on the way. Yeah, me and child definitely got some stuff. We got a song we did last summer that's like one of my most favorite songs ever. Mm -hmm. So I'm really excited. But I just told him the other day, like, I just said the other day, like I don't like how you just opened the twisted T. Y'all heard that twisted T open up. Did that get caught? Did that get caught on the mic? Please tell me it did. A little. <laughs> Bro <laughs> Yeah, she she said we had a song that we did last summer. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I'm excited about it. It's it's hard. I just told him the other day, like, man, we gotta do a tape, like our tones just to work together, yeah. You, cash, chow. Ooh. Gangsta. Gangsta. I like that. Maybe Sound on the right. deluxe. See what I'm doing here? Any yeah, fucking yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sound about right. So that so that'll be coming soon. Mm -hmm. Dope, dope, dope. Okay, so the project's on the way. It's probably out this week by the time y'all see it. Lloyd, Rick Ross, Jacquees, Cowboy. I didn't miss nobody. That's no. all the features on the project. Cody Shane. Uh, Cody Shane, of, <laughs> obviously Cody Shane, of course. Um, single out now. Uh, what else we got coming that the people gotta know about tour? Man, everything. Everything, everything is everything. I'm excited. I appreciate you. Yeah. Music, 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 music. That's all I care about this year is just dropping, dropping, dropping. Word. I want to make up for all the time lost. I owe it. I owe it to him. So I'm Word. excited. Well, I'm excited for the fans to hear this album. I'm excited for them to watch the performance. Um, c congratulations on the new project. Thank you, bro. Welcome back. We missed you. Yes. Um, before we sign off, uh, you know the drill. Any Anything else that they got to know, where they can follow you at, all that good stuff, that camera right there. Cody Shane everywhere. K-O-D-I-E-S-H-A-N-E. -E. Let's go. We on the radar. After you hear the album, you got to let me know what you think. Of course. And all of that. Of course. A thousand percent. Thanks, A thousand percent. I appreciate you. Make sure you go run up the performance. Go run up the album when it's out. Show some love. Support is free. Till next time, Cody Shane on the radar. Appreciate, appreciate you, you, bro. Love. Love, love, love.